Uh, my name's Chris O'Wellamo, uh, striker, number 22 and number 15 for Stoke when I was there. Uh, Chris, uh, what, what years did you, when did you play for Stoke? Uh, I signed in February 2000. Uh, Goodwin Thorderson and John Rudge were the, the guys that brought me to the club and I was there for four and a half years, so uh, fantastic time, great memories. Have you noticed any difference since when you played with the club today? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, we're still at the Michelin, obviously, it was, uh, we just trained over there. And, uh, yeah, there's been fantastic. I think what, what TP's done for the club as well, they've kicked on in every way, you know, in every way possible. Great for the city as well. Uh, no, it's, it's exciting times, you know, I've, I've actually moved back to the area so I kind of see it on and off the pitch, you know what I mean, what it's actually done for everyone around the place. So, so it's, uh, like I say, it's good times and I think long, long may that continue as well. Training ground won't be the same back then as it is today. Yeah, well, to be fair, I've got a good relationship with TP, and he allowed me and uh, me and Dicko to come in and train when the, the, the weather's been really bad. So we're actually training with the boys uh, the first couple of weeks in January, and it's like I say, it's it's, it's everything that you want here, you know, and it's it's uh, second to none really. I think everyone kind of tries to kind of compare themselves to the Arsenal training ground, which the facilities is unbelievable, and it's it's got it's a fantastic base. Everything can get done here. Focus on the team, focus on what needs to be done and, and obviously take it onto the pitch on a Saturday. But like I say, there's no no, no stones being left unturned, you know, it's the, the every box has been ticked when uh, when you look at the training ground, you know. Is that not, since you played Stoke have uh, developed change slightly? Well they've had to, you know, I think I played in the championship for Stoke at the highest level there, then they've kicked on now. They've uh, established themselves in the Prem for the last what is it, six, seven years, is it? So so it's uh, yeah, it's, it's it's one of them. It's it's fantastic and it's exciting times. And obviously, I think uh, this year's been a kind of difficult kind of kind of kind of period. Obviously, the transition of of obviously they've established now in the Premiership and obviously taking it to that next level. Now, I think Stoke are known as a physical a physical kind of way of playing. I don't think they should lo lose that, but I think uh, I think what TP is finding kind of probably difficult is bringing in that that certain quality of player that can link to the physical side, but also get the ball down and play. And it is, it's you've got to be very careful with that because uh, Charlton got uh, sucked into that that they they just went and changed it very quickly. And, and obviously, look where Charlton are now. Obviously, they're coming back from a kind of low point. So I think TP is a clever guy. He knows the game very well. He knows the players, and he'll he'll do it, he'll do it the right way. You know. It's very, it is very difficult, you know. I think all the all the young boys coming through as well at the minute. I think there's, I think there's a few issues with the academy thing because basically TP doesn't really have much say over what's going on with the academy. It's, uh, it's all done with the, the FIFA, uh, the FA putting in their input and certain criteria need to be met. But then again, as soon as these young players come through, they might be good enough, but then they have to be bloodied again to be good enough for the first team you know so uh, it is the transit that transition to be able to kind of to change that I think it has to be done slowly uh, and very carefully the likes of Tud guy came in I think a fantastic player works the socks off scored goals but you never quite and it's one of them you have to have I think the spine of the teams are important you speak to all managers the spine of the team but Stoke, they, they, they look at the players that they've got, look at the calibre of players that they've got playing for them now. The likes of Michael Owen, Peter Crouch. You know, these players have played for the country. You know what I mean? It's, it's fantastic. It's, it's, you, I can't believe it training with these guys. You know what I mean? The, the quality is there. So uh, it's just one of the things. It will just click one time and people say, oh man, look at But actually, and having that balance is, is better than just being a football inside. You've got to have that balance of being able to do both because teams don't like coming here. Teams don't like playing against Stoke for that physical aspect. But when they get the ball down and play, they've got the players that can do that as well, you know, 100%. Now, the one thing that really hasn't changed too much in the short time is the crowd. How important was it to you, the crowd? And how important do you think they are to the team? Well, of course, it's, you know, I think they're, they're, they've always been very passionate, very loud. For me personally, they were fantastic for me, you know. I was, uh, I was a young boy, obviously Scottish lad, came from abroad. I was welcomed by every single one of them, you know, and uh, it made my time. I, that's why I moved back to this, uh, to Stoke. I, I moved back to the area basically because I loved my time here. I always knew that I would, you know, and uh, no, the fans are they're massive, they're vital. And I know there's been, a, they've been a, kind of a little bit of negativity as well this last couple of months, but what they've got to understand as well is they've been in, they're in the Prem, they've been there for seven years, we're there again, let's make sure that we're behind the team because TP is the right man and he'll do the right thing and 
like you say, that transition is a very hard thing to try and change, you know. But slowly but surely, these players are coming. Like Charlie Adams, I know Charlie very well. Proper footballer, proper bowler. Let's just have. The, let's just let. let it will just. It will just click one day, you know. And the players are there. Oh, just click, trust me, trust me on that. Ah, is that not because I was a lot of challenges in the world as well, and he can do, he can turn games because of course he, he can. He sees the pass, yeah, he sees the vision, he's got the vision, he sees the pass. He's a technical, he's a brave player as well, he can challenge, you know, he's. He's, uh, he gets a bit of stick for the shape he's in, but he's fit as you like, you know what I mean? So that's just one of them. He's the same as a Chris Cummins kind of build, you know. Uh, nah, like I said, but you know yourself. I don't have to say this. The calibre player's there. Uh, and OK, it's one of the things when things aren't going quite for you, results don't go for you, little kind of match instances don't go for you. And that, that they change these matches, they, they determine results, you know. And I think it's, an, it's a game of opinion, so all the fans, they're, they're entitled to have a little moan up in that, but what they've got to understand is that they're in the Prem, it takes time, you know what I mean, stick, 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 with, it, stick with the manager, because he is the man for it. And, and, and just finally, I mean, the Wigan FA Cup win shows that there are still shots, Still a yeah, of course, that's hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, I think uh, Birmingham have won the cup. Uh, the only thing with that is that then the, the depth of squad when you get into Europe to be able. That's what affected Stoke as well with the Europe thing. You know what I mean? Uh, with the Birmingham, sorry. Oh, exactly. uh, it's, it, it with Stoke yeah, well. yeah, yeah. It does because you've got to have that. Uh, you've got to have that depth, that depth in the squad. You know what I mean? It's it's one of these things. Uh, a lot of, like Swansea, Swansea are gonna, Swansea are gonna feel, feel that next season as well, you know, and it's it's one of them. Swansea's style of football is more European and probably best suited for like the, a European Cup. But then, do they have that depth in squad? Uh, Loudrop's actually come out saying that he wants a squad of 22 players because he does He wants players that are gonna be there playing all the time. I'd like, I'd be, I'm very interested to see what 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 position if he still feels the same after the European Ch Challenge. Yeah, I think it's going to be a different because one of them you're going to have to drop in top and change players because the same players. It's a squad game now. It's not. It's about individual players, but it's a squad game, and you need that. You need a very strong, big squad, large squad to kind of to be able to kind of compete at all levels. You know. And then finally, I see the future still. Well, I think I think uh, I think TP will he'll have his targets, you know what I mean, and it's and uh, there'll be some exciting big names there, and I think it's one of them just bringing them in. I think the likes of Michael Kitely, you know what I mean. I think a fantastic talent, you know what I mean, and it's maybe there's a, there's certain uh, things about playing position wise and, and what's getting asked of him, you know. But when the team clicks with the new targets that he's going to be bringing in, exciting times.